everybody, it's Shelley Taylor Smith from Love the Skin You're In. And here I am. Um, a lot of people say, Where are you? Well, today we are on the Queen Mary in Long Beach Marina. Had an amazing day yesterday and saw the Endeavour on its last voyage being piggybacked on the 747. And I saw that on the Queen Mary. And today I'm meeting my lifetime heroine in Diana Nyad, who, if you don't know who Diana Nyad is, take your pulse because you're really. I don't know where you've been lately, but Google Diana, and as we go through our talk today, um, we just, you'll find out a part of Diana that I think you might not have Googled or ever known about. So Diana's uh, been a marathon swimmer world record holder, attempted to, uh, had a childhood dream like myself as become an Olympian, and unfortunately didn't make that. And then found herself in a career in marathon swimming, probably like, I don't know about, it was like me, no one ever, I didn't have any idea what it was. Didn't know these races were going on until someone came and told me, hey, X, Y, Z, I think you've got it. And now has been having a go at a childhood dream at the age of 63 and still hasn't given up. So that's a key for all of us, regardless of our age, still hasn't given up. So Diana, um, Thank you, thank you, thank you, firstly, for giving me your time today. I know you're asked to do so many interviews, and... No, but Shelley, let me just say also that, you know, I'm sort of in an odd position, because, you know, you usually achieve, if you're a world-class athlete, you do it when you're young. 20s, 30s, you know, so in our sport, maybe you can go into your 40s, but you're your best when you're in 20s and 30s. Well, and that was my case. I did all those swims I did back in my 20s, and then I retired at 30 normal life and in my 30s 40s and 50s i was a sports journalist living life you know having relationships you know all the thing and i came back at 60 but when i was away um not swimming shelly and you were the only swimmer i knew about there are people doing great swims all over the world and more and more as, as the years go by but i would read about you as the the greatest not only of your era but really of of any era if you really compare how many men you beat and how many tough swims you did. So um, uh, I'm sorry I never got to see you swim, but I, I know well of your accomplishments. And more than that, um, to my mind, there's a definition of a champion in sports. There are a lot of winners, there are a lot of people who, you know, have their names in the book and they've got the record and they won the money or whatever it is. But a champion's beyond that. A champion is someone who wants to inspire people around them and sees a life bigger than just the sport. And when you read your book and, um, you know, when you read about you and all your quotes, you, you, are, you are much bigger than a winner. You're a champion. So I, I have admired you as a human being, not just an athlete. Oh, it's going to make me cry. <laughs> we started. Yeah. Oh, thank no, you so much. No, yeah. I know. I know. And um, I know you mean that from your heart. And I can feel, yeah. I can feel it, your sincerity. And I, I thank you very much. Talking about something you just mentioned about mm. myself in, in um, competing against men, you had that opportunity, like myself, in, in racing men. Because not many women get that opportunity in sport. They do every day in the corporate world and they forget about it, don't they? Yeah. But what about our sport, our era, your era, my era? We're in a very unique opportunity where I say, for me, I owe a lot to men because they brought out the best in me. I was far, you know, I was far ahead of women that I was lucky that I had men to push me. And, you know, what did you, how did you feel that we were sharing prize money for a start? Wasn't that a joke? Um, and, you know, getting 66% or less in the, um, in the prize money. Yeah, yeah. What, what was that like for you back then? You know, I find that in general, if you command respect wherever you go, I don't care whether you're old or whether you're gay or um, whether you're Jewish or a lot of, um, minorities feel that they, they are being persecuted, that they're the ones who are less than because other people treat them that way. But I find, as an athlete, I used to walk up on the shore, I may, may not going to be winning the race, but I'm going to be up there showing my courage, and I'm the one who trained for it, so I'm not going to stand behind some man, and they wound up respecting me a great deal. I mean, even, even I, I finished fifth, let's say, in a Lac Saint-Jean in uh, Canada, so I wasn't first, second, third, or fourth, but to finish fifth out of, you know, some 40, 50 people, the men who win and the ones who finish behind me, they're all like, well, we seem to be equals. We seem to stand shoulder to shoulder, and I just act like that. I act like that in my life, like I deserve to be there. And even though now, coming back, you know, look, no one's done 100 miles in the open ocean, and I haven't either. I keep trying. But, but the point is that 
you don't need a big education about the sport. You don't need to be someone like you who's been on the inside. A person opening up the newspaper during the day or turning on the television and they say, my God, that woman started this morning when I was eating breakfast. Now I'm home with the family eating dinner. She's still swimming. Now I went to bed. I wake up the next day. She's still swimming. I went to bed the next night. She's still swimming. So all you need to know is that it doesn't matter whether it's male or female or huge or small. Um, anybody who has that much will and is willing to go that long commands respect.